Good morning, everybody. And good morning, Duncan. <laughs> yes, it's young dad. Um, and I'm just going to do a little vlog to give you an update on this terror. As you can see, he's just um, a whirly dervish. Um, that's his nickname in tet. Yes. Um, so, I've not really done a vlog since Christmas because, um, as most of you know, I had a fibro attack between Christmas and New Year. And I've kind of been getting over that. And then in the meantime, we've had Duncan. Um, it's been very tiring and I've returned to work, which has been very tiring and emotionally stressful. So um, I was hoping to keep up with these vlogs, but um, I just haven't been able to. So uh, this is the first one, I thought, as I've been up since 3.15 a.m. And then went back to bed at 4 and didn't get back to sleep till half five quarter to six and then been up at half six with this one um i thought i might as well utilize the time and do a, a vlog now um so how's it been with duncan um yeah he's not been too bad um he's settling in as you can see um i think the main issue that i've had is overnight which has been hard because um it was funny because the first week he was great you know he went in his crate the first couple of nights we had crying for about an hour and then he settled and then the second and third nights it sort of got better and by the fourth and fifth nights he'd go straight in the crate no crying um and then i was periodically getting up in the night to facilitate a toilet um break for him uh and he was fine with that and um, we had the odd wee in the crate but we had no poos for the first week it was brilliant so I thought, well, obviously he can't hold on to his bladder, but he's holding on to his toilet, you know, his, his poos. Um, and then that all changed like three days ago when we've had two nights of pooing in the crate um, and sitting in poo and wee and not even crying to let me know because what he has done in the past is when I've let him out in the middle of the night, he's um, been asleep when I've woken him up to, to go out so that you know he's not got up and gone to the toilet and I haven't let him cry so that I go to the quakes I don't want to get him used to that if he cries I go and see to him which is what I used to do with Errol which is a mistake I made <coughs> so he's been quite good um but then if he's been in the crate and then I let him out for a wee and then I put him back in the crate and then two or three hours later when it's sort of about time to get up sometimes He's done a wee and then whinged because he's weed. So normally when he's like that, I can hear him whinging. I know he's probably done a wee. Um, but the night he did the poos and wheeze, nothing. Came down, he was just sat upright, quiet as a lamb, sitting around chaos, basically, in the crate. So on that night, which was the night before last, was particularly stressful because I cleared up the poos and wheeze. I had to put all his bedding in the washing machine. This is at like half three, four o'clock in the morning. I had to put all the all the stuff in the washing machine, wipe the crate down, see to him, put him in the pen. But because it took me longer than normal, um, he, he was awake for longer. So when I put him back in the crate, he was like crying. So I thought, Do you know what? I might as well make myself a brew because um, I'm going to be awake for 20 minutes, half an hour with him crying. So I made a brew, came back to the crate, Put the brew on top of the crate because I was trying to close the baby gate and I had a torch in one hand as well. The top of the crate's quite sturdy, or so I thought. So put the brew on top of the crate, he then jumped to the side of the crate, the cup of tea fell over and went all over his bedding and the clean puppy pad I'd put in there. Luckily it didn't go over him, thankfully. But then he wanted to try and lick up the tea. So then I had to get him out, put him back in the pen, clean up the cup of tea that was everywhere and start the whole process again by which time I was wide awake so I didn't get to sleep at all from four o'clock till I got up and then I was in work so um tiredness like I've not felt before this last two weeks partly down to the fibro and then obviously I'm just that's kind of gone but I'm now just fatigued because I you know because of him really so um, old dad can't get up in the night to do him because he takes the medication that wipes him out 
So, um, unfortunately, it's left down to me, which is a bit rubbish. But, you know, it's kind of worth it. And then this morning, I, I was up at three o'clock. Luckily, when I took him out, he did a wee and a poo, then went back in the crate. He had a bit of a whinge, but the crate was dry last night, so that's something. But it still means getting up in the middle of the night, which, you know, we're hoping will end soon. I mean, he's 12 weeks on Tuesday, and I keep reading these, you know, posts on Facebook, on you know, various cocker Facebook pages saying, oh, well, I had a puppy from 10 weeks and he slept right through. Well, good for you. You know, he's not. So, you know, it annoys me when I see people that write that because I think, well, you know, Errol never slept right through from 10 weeks and he hasn't slept right through from 10 weeks. So, you know, if you have got a puppy that's done that, then you're very lucky, basically. Um. So, but I'm hoping, like I said, it won't be too long before... He sorts himself out. So, um, in the day, he's been quite good. He's been in a pen in the in the lounge, for, you know, so that he's got all his toys and he's got a toilet at one end. And more often than not, when we give him his food, we know roughly how, how long he's going to take till he needs a poo, and we take him out. So, actually, he's been with us 10 days, approximately four poos a day. So, what's that? 40 poos. Um, so, he's probably done four poos in the crate in the pen in the day which isn't too bad oh no he hasn't he's only done two poos yeah that's right he's done two poos in the pen which is not bad at all um and the two poos he did do is because we took our eye off the ball i was in the kitchen and art came in to make a coffee left him on his own and he pooed it wasn't for very long but you know you've got to catch him quick haven't you when they're this age and then get them used to outside is where your toilet so we're getting there. He's been okay with Errol. Um, obviously, he wants to charge around with Errol, jumping on his ears, biting him. And Errol kind of, the first day, <laughs> first day Errol was like, yeah, this is really great. I've got a puppy to play with. And then like the second day, he was like, he's biting my ears. And then the third day, he just sat in front of me most of the day, staring at me like that. And it was like he was saying, when's it leaving so <laughs> poor Errol he's um I mean he's he's taken to him a bit more now and he's played with him a bit more in the last couple of days so I'm hoping they'll be friends but obviously when he gets one on him he is a whirling dervish and I think Errol gets to the point where he's like right I've had enough of this now so um but you know he's not been mean to Duncan you know he's been quite accommodating when he plays with him he's quite nice he plays with him quite nicely so hopefully you know, it will just develop that relationship. And I'm trying not to leave Errol out. It's really hard, isn't it? You know, people say, people have said to me before we got the puppy, oh, you know, make sure you see to Errol first and make sure you give Errol loads of love. And, you know, I, I do do that, but the puppy obviously needs a lot of time and attention. So, it and that time and attention is attention that Errol's not getting. So it is really hard to kind of juggle that and do, you know, yeah, I didn't I didn't sort of think about how difficult that would be and I have to try and stop myself and think, no, Errol needs a love first, but you know, the puppy's so demanding it does it does take you away from your dog because Errol's so good, I can leave him to his own devices, so you kind of forget that yeah, anyway, I'll work on that. Um so he's putting on weight, he had his first little mini walk yesterday. But he decided he wanted to sit down outside the shops and not move anywhere, so I had to carry him all the way home, which isn't great with my stability on my knee. But anyway, it was it was good to get him out, and he was quite good. Um, so if you've got any questions about him, then you can ask me, or I'll do another vlog about him. But, you know, we, we're doing okay at the minute, I think. Um, if you're wondering why I'm wearing this hat, by the way, number one, it's early in the morning and it's cold, but number two... It's an oddballs, I don't know if you can see that on there, oddballs hat. Um, when I got my lovely pyjama set for art for, for Christmas, it had um, it was from this company called Oddballs. And basically they donate a percentage of their um, profits to testicular cancer research, which I think is great. So um, I thought I'd just do a bit of like, you know, vlog promotion of their stuff as I enjoyed their Christmas um, lounge set. In fact, I enjoyed it so much, take that off for now, that I actually bought um, another pyjama set, which you can probably see there. I'm just 
quite nice. Uh, bottoms on a t-shirt. Austin Flowers, that's called, which is quite cool. And then this one, which I think is Hippie Jungle. Ooh, colours. So, even though it might be dull January, I'm not going to be dull in January, am I? So, um, that's good. So, um, I'll do another vlog. I wanted to talk to you about knitting, actually. I'm going to do that next time because... Um, I think this vlog is 10 minutes now, so I think that's enough for people to get bored with. But I wanted to talk to you about knitting because I need some help if anybody knows how to make socks. Because I've bought some sock yarn, I have no idea how to do it. I think my mum's going to try and help me out, actually. But um, if anybody's got any nice patterns that they could send over or... I need to know also, do I use the four needles or do I use like the circular needle? And can you do it with the circular needle or does it get difficult when it gets to the heel and toe? Anyway, that's something I need to work out, but... Um, I want to start making my own socks. I wear socks. I buy them. I don't always like the socks I buy, but, I, you know, I have to buy them. I bought some lovely sock yarn, which I can't get my hands to at the moment because I've got him on my knee. So I'll do a blog about um, knitting and I'll show you the yarn I've got. And if anybody's a fellow knitter, they can let me know in the comments. Um, so other than that, uh, I hope everybody's well. had a happy new year. Thank you for everybody that posted messages up. Sorry if I didn't reply to everybody, but I was out of it. Um, and uh, I hope everybody's had a nice sort of settled start to January. And looking forward to the light of evenings and spring, which is only around the corner, he says, hopefully. So, um, although I think we're getting snow the week after next, so I'm probably being over kind of hopeful on that one. But anyway, enjoy your Sunday and bye for now.